Okay, we're going. We're going. Hello. Hello. Welcome to Frizy's Corner Bar. Oh, Mike's head's cut off. Yeah, my just, head's cut off. You tell me. I'm going to move the camera up a little bit. And okay. Just tell me. Can you see the top of your head now? Just look in there. Okay. Yeah, you can see the top. Okay. I should go powder it. There's a little bit of a reflection. Yeah, a little bit of a reflection. Okay. Happy, Welcome. Welcome, yes. Happy Friday. Um, I just want to preface that if we go offline for some reason, it's because we're having some severe winds up here. We live on a high hill by the ocean, so we're getting some... It's not a nor'easter, but it's pretty pretty good rainstorm, and... Um, and so could go out. we lost, we actually lost internet probably 30 minutes ago. And I was like, not again. So first off, I hope everyone can hear us. Can you hear us? Please we say had, yes. We had sound issues last week and uh, it was disappointing because we had a good, you know, we had a lot of, we did a lot of prep for that show, but we'll try to do some highlights from that show and uh, cover what we want to do in this show. Oh, Carolyn says they can hear us. Thank you, Carolyn. And Betty says yes as well. That Hi, is Betty. good news. Hello, Carolyn and Betty. And Steve says yes as well. Okay, okay. excellent. So far, so good. Okay, um, so what's the plan? What What is your plan for tonight? And then I'll talk about my I'm plan. I'm just going to set and drink. You can look at the camera. Okay. <laughs> I'm just not always set looking here. back there. <laughs> what's back there? Anyway, um, I am. We're doing something simple. We had, we both had a really um, busy week. Yesterday was a killer for me, and today was just about as bad. Um, so we're just doing regular hamburgers tonight. Um, I'm actually doing Wall Burgers from um, uh, Wahlberg's Brothers. Uh, Paul has a big restaurant up in Hingham, and they actually sell their hamburgers. So I'm doing something really simple tonight. Um, but I want to share with you some of the toppings that I that we like to do. So I typically well, why don't you do this? Start with the bacon, and then I'll talk about this, and then you can talk about the toppings when your burger is cooking. Okay, yeah, sounds okay. like her plan. <laughs> well, it was the plan. <laughs> <laughs> I just freestyle it all. I don't really okay. have a plan. I'm going to so, show the food cam now. So we're going to start with um, bacon weave. And what you do here is you get really close to your wife, but this is um, three slices of bacon cut in half. Is that right? No. Yeah. Six no. slices of bacon <laughs> cut in half. And then what I did is I laid out three slices and then I weaved them through. And then you slide this into the oven at 400 degrees for about 20 minutes. And it depends on your bacon. For the for the time so what i would start to do is check it at around 15 minutes so um i'm going to slide this into the oven here and you don't have to turn it you don't have to do anything and what's nice is if you make like a little um uh what would you call that thing there <laughs> so the grease you can keep the pan clean because i've already done one yeah. Um, and it's nice. And this is heavy duty foil. So, and what's nice about this is it, it's going to shrink up and it's going to be the size of the burger. So when you put it on top of the burger, you're going to get bacon in every bite. You every don't have bite. to worry about it falling off the, the sandwich. The, uh, the other thing that's really, really neat about this weaving of the bacon is you can do big pieces like, um, and you know, use maybe eight, or more slices and weave it all together evenly. And then if you have a pork tenderloin or something, you can roll your meat in it and then bake your meat in this uh, bacon. In this bacon weave. Assuming so, you like bacon. Yes. So anyway, this so is going in the like oven. Bacon? Yeah. So this is gonna go in the oven and then I am going to probably get um, my burgers going, I think, and then you can do your cocktail and then I'll- Well, let me do the cocktail. And then you can come over and talk about your burgers. Okay. <laughs> Gosh, it's so hard. <laughs> I know. It's like we spend all this time. So Kevin Showy says, says looking and sounding good. Well, thank you, Kevin. Now, what the first thing I'm going to do. So last week, I had prepared a, a cast aged cocktail. The cocktail I prepared was the La Rosy. La Rosita, and this is a, a tequila riff on like a Negroni, and it is very tasty. And so I put it in, I put it in the cask, 
So I had made two liters of it and I put it in the cask. And so this is aged for a week. Now this is a, a barrel we've used several times. And I just, I just, uh, um, after like the fourth or fifth time you use a barrel, you want to clean it. So, so this is a freshly cleaned barrel and, uh, and we tested it, tasted it yesterday and it was, was very good. But I'm actually, because it's, I, I want it to quit aging. So when you're ready for it to quit aging, you actually want to take it out of the cask. And I'm just going to pour it into a picture, pitcher here. So we're, we're going to take it out of the cask and then... We're going to drink it. We are going to have one of these cocktails tonight. But when, when I look at this color, it's actually darker than it was. And I'm not going to take the whole thing out of it. Oh, there we go. Would have helped if I had it all the way open. And so what I'm going to do after the show is I'm going to transfer this back into, we. I saved the tequila bottle and uh, we'll probably have a couple cocktails and then I will, uh, that'll fit perfectly in a tequila bottle. And when you go to serve it, so this is a perfect thing to serve for Thanksgiving. When you go to serve it, you can just pour it out of the bottle and do what I'm going to do. So I'm going to mix this in a glass. So a, a cocktail, a normal size cocktail of this cocktail, and I'm going to put the strainer on because sometimes you get little, there is no barrel, barrel char in there. Sometimes you get them. So I'm making two. So I'm just going to put a cocktail is three ounces. So I'm just putting six ounces in my mixing glass. The other thing we did last week which you'll have to check out the recipe on the uh, Frizy's Corner Bar, was apple cider sangria, and it was really good. We, we, uh, uh, we finished that off last weekend, and I'm absolutely going to make that um, for the holidays because it, it's very tasty. Okay, and I'm going to put two dashes of bitter because, as I had said on the show, when you age a cocktail... You don't want to uh, put the bitters in the barrel because that'll over, over. Um, the bitters, when, when you age something, the bitters really come forward. And so you don't want to over bitter the cocktail because there's Campari in it. So it's bitter already. So we're going to stir this. And then I'm just going to pour this into two old fashioned glasses. And I'm going to put some ice in these glasses. Just a, just a touch of ice. And then um, you can garnish it with a lemon or an orange. I am using an orange because the next thing I'm going to talk about is limoncello. And I used all... My lemon, my lemons to make uh, to prepare for the limoncello. So, honey, you want to come over and? I do. Take your drink. So here is the uh, La Rosa, Rosa. La Rosita. <laughs> Thank you. Um, and it's it is it's a beautiful rose color. No garnish. Yeah, it's in there. It is. Yeah, it's oh. floating. Yes. Cheers. Cheers. Love, Love you. you. Cheers, um, everyone. Hmm. It's really good. It's tasty. And, and it ta I will say it tastes different um, than it did before it was aged. It, it, you can taste the smokiness. Yeah, you can taste the, um, the charring of the barrel a little bit, some of the aging of it. So Kevin Showy says neat trick with the bacon. It is, it's, I, it is really good. It is I saw super that easy. together. And then Tyson says, do whatever Shannon says. <laughs> That's the way it rolls around here, Tyson. Hey, Tyson, good to see you the other day, Trader Joe's. <laughs> and then James says, oh, yeah, biscuit basket. And Mike Pellrine says, cheers. Cheers, Mike. We'll see you guys tomorrow night down at the Voyage. Yes, they're playing at the Voyage tomorrow night. So make sure you go down to the Voyage if you're local. Okay, so do you want to show the burgers? Do you want to wait on the burgers? Well, they're still cooking. Okay, well, I just want to see if they're, 
when they're ready to flip, I want to show. Them. I will. So you you want to talk about your garnishes? Um, or do you want me to do the? Yeah, I uh, want to talk a little bit about um, what I'm doing with um, the hamburgers. Okay. So good. just a couple of helpful hints. I know everybody can cook a hamburger. Um, there's a couple of things that you want to keep in mind about when you cook hamburgers. We tend to like thin burgers, like the steak and steak shot style. Um, we're not big fans of these one inch huge patties. Yeah, that's a huge. And um, if you're gonna, I'm doing these inside only because it's stormy here. Um, if you do them out on the grill, you never wanna have the grill super hot. You wanna have it on medium heat, let it heat up, um, put the burgers on. But before you do, that's when you salt and pepper them right before they go on. Because if you salt them, let them sit around for 10, 15 minutes, that salt just sucks out some of the moisture. So right before they go on the grill, or in in this case, into the pan, you salt them and then you put them right in. Do I have something on my face? No, oh, no, okay. it's just when you slap your hands down. It, it's better to do it on that slap on the my counter. Hand down, I know. And so um, <laughs> the other thing is, is when you make your burgers, try to make them uniform in size and then put a little indentation into it. Some people call it a baseball indent. And what happens is, is burgers will tend to swell up. And so then your burger looks like that. But when you put that indentation in, they'll, they'll even out in the cooking process. Um, the other thing is, is you never want to smash the burgers down. You don't want to get all that juice and, and, and everything out of there. And you primarily cook them on the first side. When you put them in, you, you know, it's about six or seven minutes. You flip it and then it's about half of that time, maybe two or three minutes. And then your burger should be around medium to medium well, I mean medium rare. I tend to cook um, burgers that we actually make. So I'll buy a nice chuck roast or something like that and I grind it up. This is not tonight just because we had such a busy week. So let me just talk a little bit about um, what I have for toppings here. Before I do that, I just want to... If you're going to flip, don't, don't flip them until I... No, I'm not. I just want to see what they look well, like. you never do that. You can tell to... by how sweaty they are. I'm going to show that. Get out of here. No, All right. On. Where's... What are you showing? <laughs> you can go show it. Go ahead. Go show it. She's been oh, dying to talk about I the just... sweaty meat. So let's go see it. Well, go no, see it. Seriously. You can tell. Just one second. Let's Hurry up because I got to flip, flip them in show. a second. But... So I, I got this the food cam because I know people Shannon want talks to about something. when the burgers sweat that's time to flip them I can tell yeah. just by looking because so, I am an expert at so cooking. when when see how juicy that is right there in the middle when you get sweat all around the burger is when it is time to flip and these are pretty close that needs a little bit more time but uh, okay so that is that and then let me just put this Look, I'm off. in charge. I got it all. Yeah, oh, wait. I'm out of my way. I needed to show you how to hide that. So now you want to talk about your toppings? No, you can do it. No, so, I'm good. kidding. So, um, topping wise, we do um, hamburgers a lot like we do pizzas. When we make pizzas, we'll, I'll, I'll make up a bunch of different toppings because it's it's kind of nice to have choices. A lot of times it's lettuce, tomato, and onion, right? Or a pickle and all that stuff. So what I did here, um, I know these look very dark. These are, um, what are those mushrooms? Portobello. Portobello mushrooms that I sauteed in duck fat. And the key about doing, um, I got to, you want to put those for me real quick? Let's hope she can get that right. So the key in, in sauteing mushrooms is, is to use a large skillet. I put some duck fat down, once it melted, then I added my mushrooms. But you want to make sure that the mushrooms are all spaced out because they release moisture. And if they're really close, the mushroom next to it absorbs that moisture and then it just feeds through and they never get down, cooked down to that really condensed mushroom flavor. So if you keep them all separate and don't let the moisture go from one mushroom to the other, when they, when they get done, they just have this intense mushroom flavor. We're gonna do some pepper jack cheese. Which that should go on right now. Yeah, that should be going on. My assistant is taking care of that, by the way. And here I have some pickled onions. So pickled onions are super easy to do. You slice them really nice and thin. You put in um, a cup of um, vinegar. 
and then I did a third of a um, cup of sugar and then a quarter teaspoon of salt and I brought that all to a boil and I poured it over my sliced onion, onions and then I just covered that with saran wrap and let it set. So that's just called a quick pickle. And last, we're gonna throw some jalapenos on to the burgers along with the bacon. So this way, we're gonna do a bacon, jalapeno, mushroom, pickled onion. No, no, Avocado no. burger. It's gonna be about that tall. No. So, the no. mushrooms are for the bacon and the cheese. And <laughs> not the point the is, is you can it. put anything on there you want. So think outside the box besides lettuce, tomato, and onion. That's the point of what okay. we're trying to get to. You can make your burger I'm any gonna way hide you want. The, I'm going to hide the food cam. We got a couple comments. You go check your burger. Yeah, yeah. Let's yeah. see. Betsy says, great show, guys. See you tomorrow. Looking forward to it. Dory says, yeah, food cam. Actually, I want I want to go show that up, but it's like Kevin Choi says, "You guys crack me up." Yeah, we love each other so much. We can have a good time. Um, already made my eggnog. Want to try a lemon cello this year? And Jane says, "Fun show tonight." Thank you. It was a fun show last week too, but nobody heard it. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. Last week was even more fun. Do you want uh, me to do you want to show that food or not? Um, not yet. No. Okay. Okay. So next, I'm going to talk about limoncello. So I so both tonight I'm going to make eggnog and limoncello, and we traditionally always make this like six weeks before the holiday. So it would have been either last weekend or this weekend. So um, so I started the limoncello. So I. Um, so limoncello is actually, it takes time, but it's much easier than anybody thinks. So I, you start out with this. This is probably, I used every lemon we had, which I think was probably 17 lemons. So you peel 17 lemons and you peel, and I love this OXO citrus peeler because you don't want any of the pith. You just want the peel. Now this year, um, I had had the lemons in the refrigerator. I had washed them off, soaked them in vinegar for like 30 minutes, a vinegar water bath for like 30 minutes, and then put them in the refrigerator. So they were in the refrigerator for 24, 48 hours. They were so much easier to peel when they were ice cold. Um, it, it took me probably half the time to peel all the lemons as it did. So I peeled all the lemons, and you, I just use a... Uh, what is this, a quart jar? Use a quart jar. You put all your lemon peel in the jar, and then you um, use, this is a fifth of Everclear 190 proof grain alcohol, and you pour that in, and it filled it right up to the top. The whole fifth fit in there. And then you, you let this um, soak for two weeks. You shake it every day. And I put this in yesterday, and you can actually see how yellow. Let me show yeah, the Everclear is starting to pick up the color of the lemons, and it's probably hard to see. Yeah, it's. it might be easier to see here. You can kind of see how the liquid is yellow. And so you, we're going to age this until when you look in, those peels will look white. So we're, we're trying to, we're leaching all of the oil essence out of the, um, the lemon. And then what I did with the lemon, so then I took and I squeezed all the lemons and I took that lemon juice and I put lemon juice, what the 50, whatever the weight of the lemon juice was, I put that much sugar in, put that into this quart jar and every day I'm going to shake this, and this makes a good lemon cordial. Now, typically when you make the limoncello, you make a simple syrup. So you just use water and syrup to, to dilute this. This recipe is on Fry's Eats Corner Bar. But this year I'm actually going to try, and I'm going to put some of this actual lemon, lemon uh, um, cordial and water into the uh, the alcohol mixture because I think that's going to be delicious. So this is my limoncello, which we have uh, kind of um, off to the side so that uh, 
for and then we put it together and we love that for Christmas. So let's see. Oh, Dory says, uh, how long do the pickled onions keep? Um, well, if you put them in the refrigerator in, in that vinegar solution, they'll probably keep for a week or so. They never last that long for us because I use them in a lot of different things. So I've had them for a week and that's as long as they've lasted for me or for us. So then Kevin at, says, Everclear will mess you up. Everclear <laughs> straight up will mess you up. But um, I have a, I, I, there's actually a calculation on the limoncello recipe that you can actually control the proof of the alcohol. And I try to, I try to shoot for like a 28% alcohol in the limoncello or, or less. Um, so that's why I thought adding the actual lemon juice will make it, uh, make it rather tasty. Okay. So that is the limoncello. Are we ready? To I just got one thing I want to show. Some, yep. Um, I'm going to toast our buns. We always toast buns here and there's okay. a couple of ways you can do it. You know, you can take your bun and put a smear a little butter on there or something of that nature. Or mayonnaise. Mayonnaise, mayonnaise is excellent. Mayo is really good to do that. You put it on and then you, you know, you um, brown it that way. Um, what I find is a really easy way also is if you have olive oil or canola spray, you can just take it. Make sure it's a good spray. Yeah. You want a good spray and you just spray the bun. I'm going to do this other one with something else, but you just spray it. Put it on onto the um, into your pan, and it will brown nicely, and you don't have to worry about ripping the bread or the bun or anything of that nature. So, okay, thank so, you for that. Are we ready? Uh, you're going to have to move your food here because we're you're going to. Oh, I was going to show do, my salads. Well, you can show your salads, but right now you got to you got to mix up the egg. I I okay. I'm, I put him, I'm putting him on. Uh, on the manual labor of the, uh, the, the whipping of the egg. So uh, eggnog, we're moving on to eggnog. So eggnog takes 12 egg yolks. Uh, so you wanna wash the eggs and dry them and then separate the eggs. And so you'll have 12 egg yolks and then you'll, you know, the le I love with the leftover egg whites, I actually make angel food cake from scratch I actually need to post my angel food scratch recipe. It is delicious. It's actually Jake's, uh, uh, our son Jake always wants that for his uh, birthday. his birthday. So what I'm doing here is I'm going to put the, uh, um, and you want you want big bowls because we're going to make big batches. So I'm putting the egg whites in this, I mean the egg yolks in this bowl. Sorry, sorry. It's That's pretty okay. loud. I wish I had a mute button for his microphone. No. <laughs> yeah, you have me wear it all the time. <laughs> <laughs> and then we are going to put a pound of sugar in. So we have a pound of sugar. And then I am putting Mike. Oh, oh and go then go ahead. And then a where's my nut? My oh, it's right here. So you want to use fresh nutmeg. So you, you basically, I take the nutmeg and we have this nice microplaner and we have one teaspoon of fresh nutmeg. So that goes in. And now this is going to be whipped until it is like a ribbon quality. So I'm going to give that to Mike. I will put this on the food cam so you can watch Not him. while I'm whipping. Yes, yes. So while he's doing that, yeah, that looks good. <laughs> if you if you guys were, all, were here last last year, Max was here and Max uh, Max whipped that for me. Yes, Max did it. And I remember Carolyn going, "Look at that boy whip." Okay, so now in another bowl, we are going to combine one pint of heavy cream. And you want heavy heavy cream, not whipping cream, because whipping cream has has an agent in it. Is one that, pint. Is that a ribbon? No, not at all. One pint of half and half. 
Last year we also used. I actually like using the super fine sugar because it, it, it whips in. The AC. It's it hot. whips in much faster. The AC is on. Oh, okay. Starting to work up a little sweat here. One cup of whole milk. Then we're gonna do one cup of Myers rum, and I highly recommend using Myers rum in eggnog because the um, it's there's a heavy molasses flavor to Myers rum, and it really gives a nice depth to your eggnog. One one cup of High, this is a hundred proof bourbon, and this bourbon is excellent. This is it's called Uncle Nearest, and it is a high proof bourbon, and it's it's a very tasty bourbon. I also recommend, I mean whiskey. I also recommend that, and then one cup of cognac, and as we discussed before, um, many times, cognac is just bourbon, a brandy that's made, uh, made in the cognac region of France. And then one quarter teaspoon of salt. And again, I gotta grab another. Oh, gotta check, check the bacon. That looks ribbony to me. Yeah. It could go just a few more minutes. Well, don't put it on for 34. Well, just watch it. Okay. Let me just let me check his work. Yes. See, that's a... Yes, I knew it was. Perfect ribbon. Okay. If you guys need any ribbons made, give me a yell. <laughs> okay, I'm going to hide that food cam. And what time is it? Oh, well, we're almost out of time. So now what we are going to do, I'm just mixing this up. And I'm not going to mix this whole thing here. But what, what I'm going to do is slowly incorporate the egg mixture into this mixture. And then I'm going to transfer it to large jars and we are going to store this in the refrigerator and every day we're going to shake it because it's going to take time for that sugar to dissolve and a minimum of two weeks uh the longer the better though like a month is great and we actually i we actually have some left over from last year because i um you know it can age for longer than a year so I wanted to try the, I, once we have this done, I want to compare it to eggnog that's been aged a year. But, uh, but all of this alcohol will, uh, particularly because we're using the high proof alcohol, will uh, prevent this stuff from going bad. Okay, so we have some more comments here. Kevin Shoey says, Sweaty meat. I think there's a joke in there, but I'm going to let it go. <laughs> Carolyn says, I like big bowls and I cannot lie. <laughs> and Pat says, can you use an electric beater? Of course. Yes, you absolutely can use an electric beater. Um, I, th I thought about doing that, but I think for the show, it was going to make too much noise. So I, ha I have my... Uh, my electric feeder. So um, another joke is in there too. How you doing over there, babe? Good. Did, did you want to show your bacon? That's um, I can. Out? Yeah. I was just. So I can't set this down. So you got to do this pretty quick because oh. it's hot. So this is my bacon. Wait, wait, wait. There it is. Okay. This is my ribbon bacon. So I kind of messed it up when I was moving it. Um, so anyway, it's all done. The grease is all down here. I'm going to put it on a paper towel for just a minute to um, get any excess grease and stuff off. I have my buns over here in the pan getting ready to brown. Yeah, the food cam. So do you want me to keep the food cam on or? Um, I don't care. You can. Here, I need to put this in. I don't have anything. I don't have the buns done yet. They're just about okay. there. Well, then that's okay. No, I'm we'll just, just. Give me about two seconds and I'll be right over. Okay, two seconds. You can See? show my salads. 
Okay. Put your salads in. Lovely salads. We eat like that every night. Yeah, we we have a set a big salad every night. That's uh, part of part of the it's, mix. It's my way to get extremely fresh vegetables. Um, we don't use any canned vegetables. It's either frozen or fresh. And I like to do a really good salad. I have on here purple onions, cu um, Parisian cucumbers. Those are the small ones. Um, celery, carrots, um, purple onions. And then I sprinkle a little feta cheese on top. And then um, I'm going to let Shannon make up her burger, but I'm going to make mine. Show them the nice caramelization you got on the burger. That's you know, as when you cook a burger right, it's nice and you got that crispy coating on it. That's the key to not touching it until it's... Yeah, and you never smash it down. So this is what it looks like here. Can you see it? Yeah, so, we, we like our burgers medium. Yeah, so these are medium. And then this is um, the pepper jack cheese. So you can see nice and um, done. Okay. So we done. Oh, let's see. Um, we have another one. Please say again why heavy cream and not whipping cream, please. So, so the difference. So there's heavy cream and there is whipping cream. Whipping cream actually has an additional agent in it. It's like a gum agent that helps with the whipping. You really don't want to add, you know, any additional ingredients like that into the eggnog. You know, I think you could and it wouldn't wouldn't hurt it, but I, I just, you know, the recipe calls for heavy cream, and so that's what, uh, what I like to use. So what you doing over there, babe? Are we done? I'm, yeah, I'm just building my burger. Okay. Well, then I am going to, we're going to sign off here in just one minute. We've got another question uh, or another comment. Salads for dinner, but 12 egg yolks and a pound of sugar. Mm. Well, that is the thing. You know, that's, you know, eggnog is a holiday, holiday drink. And I'll say we don't actually drink that much of it, which is why I still have a liter left over from last Christmas. And we gave, we, we actually like to give this away for gifts. Um, for those people who like eggnog. And Pat says, we'll be contacting you for the eggnog recipe. Absolutely. I can send you the, uh, the link. And, uh, and I think, I'm not sure if Sandy's still watching the show. I think Sandy uh, used this eggnog recipe last year and everybody really enjoyed it. So okay. I built my burger, and I okay. have onions, jalapenos, Let me hide this. Um, okay. what's the avocado. Oh, I just put the, the food game up. Oh, that's go. all right. It doesn't matter. Okay. Anyway. Yeah, just show it. And then. So this is, uh, I put a little bit of everything on there. Avocado, jalapenos, onions, bacon, mushrooms, okay. salad. And this is a moonshine pickle. This is, um, these are pickles that were cured in moonshine. And Pat says, thank you. And the show is awesome. Thank you guys for watching. We cheers, really, everybody. Uh, cheers. Have a great night. Oh, have a great Thanksgiving. And, and actually, we're not going to be doing the show for the next two weeks because we have some holiday commitments we have to attend to. So, so we will be back in uh, the beginning of December. I think it's December 2nd um, is the night that we'll be back okay. on that Friday. So... If so you've got any comments, um, things you'd like to see us maybe um, try to do for the show in terms of cocktails or cooking, um, like, share, and um, comment. Thanks, and guys. Let us know. Thank Fun you, guys. Show. Have a great night. And cheers. Cheers, everyone. Happy Thanksgiving. Bye-bye. <laughs>